Now, the country is losing engineers at an alarming rate, and this is according to the South African Institution of Civil Engineering. It believes this brain drain could negatively affect the economy. Engineers are apparently leaving the country to use their skills abroad, but the SAICE wants government rather to put measures in place that will attract them back into South Africa. Joining me for more on this, we are joined by Stephen Kaplan, the acting CEO of the SAICE. So thank you for your time and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is very concerning. When I read the uh, statistics and I absolutely saw the article, why are engineers leaving the country at this rate? I think let me start off by saying why we feel that engineers are so important to this country. I think um, we, we feel that the engineers are, are, are the principal people that do the design and the maintenance of infrastructure in this country. And I'm sure you're aware that lately in the news, there have been a lot of infrastructure problems, you know, bridges collapsing, roads that haven't been maintained, etc., etc. And I think we feel quite strongly that there needs to be more capacitation and a, and a much stronger engineering presence in all infrastructure departments of um, um, government and also with municipality. And so we feel very concerned when we know that our engineers are starting to leave. Um, if I look at SICE's, South African Institution of Civil Engineering Statistics, you know, I can only quote from that. And we've lost about 2% over the last three years of our professional engineers. That's not including the students um, or the graduate engineers. I'm yeah. just talking about the professionally registered engineering practitioners. We've lost 2% over the last three years. And they're leaving this country because there just isn't sufficient work going on. You know, we need the government to actually commit, which they have done, to prioritizing and allocating budget to infrastructure development, to the maintenance of existing infrastructure and to new infrastructure. Yeah. And if the government does deliver on these promises through um, Sora Ramaphosa's stimulus package and also through the, the National Development Plan, which undertook to provide these promises, things could turn around quite rapidly. We know that. It's, it's important right. that we spend that money. It creates the jobs, it creates the opportunities, and it'll stimulate the construction industry, and it'll obviously entice our engineers to remain here. Right. And hopefully, as I said there in that article that you referred to, it'll, it'll encourage some of the engineers that have left to come back. But obviously, we're having this mm. conversation because if the engineers continue to leave, this will have a knock-on effect on the economy. We need those skills. Absolutely. Right now, if you, if you look at there, there's been a lot of retrenchment of engineers. And so if you say there's a shortage of engineers right at this moment, that's probably not true. There's been, as you know, the, the big five contractors are all in business rescue. They've laid off thousands of laborers and engineers, and the consulting firms have laid off probably up to a quarter of their entire engineering staff. So if you, as I say, if you ask me now, there are plenty of engineers. There's no shortage of engineers. But if, as I asked or suggested, that the government turn things around and all that infrastructure development takes place, which is promised, we could suddenly find ourselves with a huge shortage of engineers. Right. And that is a huge sort of controversy for us because you know we, we say that we've got too many engineers right now because there isn't enough employment but if the country's economy was running in the right direction we could actually have the shortage of engineers like we had during um, the World Cup for example when there was a lot of work going on we had a you know a shortage of engineers then I think the, the, the point too is that the effect on the economy is quite significant as you suggested because it costs a lot of money to get these engineers through university you know, and there's obviously government subsidy through those um, academic fees going through their, through their university years. Right. And also it costs a fortune to get them developed and trained in their employment environment for four to five years before they get professionally registered. So you're spending all that time and money, four years of university, four to five years of, of, of practical experience to get them registered and then they leave. You know, so it's a, it's, a, it's a disaster for us, it quite is, honestly. It is. But obviously we talk about mm. government now, Stephen. However, we do know mm. that we're seeing a reluctance of engineering professionals going into the public sector. How can government make public sector a lot more you know, lucrative and attractive yeah. to engineers? It's important that you know, being in government departments of infrastructure development or in municipalities becomes a, uh, a sort of a job opportunity of, of, of choice. In other words, it's a, it's a, way, it's a yes. way to go because you're going to get experience. The only way that's going to happen is if, if there's a proper mentorship program within these organizations. In other words, there are senior engineers in there that have the capacity to mentor and train young engineers and make it a, 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 an employment opportunity of choice. Right now, what it isn't is that. Um, you know, it, it's fraught with politics. It's fraught with 
with situations where the financial restraints are in there and, and, the, and there is no mentorship. There's nobody helping those young engineers actually get proper training towards their registration. So it's not a place to go and get employment. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a dead end for, for young engineers yeah. right now. But as I said, if, if the government can turn that around, get the capacitation in the higher senior roles, then it'll be a place of choice for the young graduates to go in there and, and, it, and it becomes an environment for growth but for, also for the young engineers. But also it seems that, you know, Stephen, just to jump in there, mm. the personnel already there is, are not quite favourable. I mean, it seems that appropriately qualified and professionally registered technical you know, personnel are in quite lucrative management positions, which also makes it unattractive for engineers to go. Are you talking about in government or in private sector? In public sector, in public, in private, in government as well. Because, I've, I've, I mean, I've engaged with some engineers who say some of the technical managers in key decision-making positions um, have no experience whatever, they're not necessarily qualified, um, hence, you know, putting some of, you know, our SOEs in mining or even in engineering um, at a bleak state. I think that's probably true. I think the, the problem is, is that people are accelerated through the, through the ranks before they've had a chance to develop their experience. And then they find themselves in senior positions and, and probably earning quite senior salaries, but not with the experience to make the right decisions. And, and I think and, and that is, is the situation that then reflects down through that particular organization or state or enterprise or municipality. You haven't got enough experience in those roles that make the decisions, that decide on which projects are to be implemented, right. decide on, on, on the, on the prioritisation of those projects, on the money that should be spent on those projects, making sure that the right contractors are employed, that the projects are executed timelessly and within proper budget and quality. And none of that's happening right now. Well, coupled with the fact that there's not much actually going on right now mm -hmm. because there isn't enough sort of government spend on infrastructure development. I've, you know, really where it starts is government spend. It's got to start there. They've got to actually free up the budget, get the direction and, and start implementing these projects, rolling them out and, and then develop the capacity and, and grow it through the organisation. There's a lot of work to be done. We've got to reverse you know, what's been happening in the last sort of eight, nine years, where things have just sort of literally deteriorated to a point where they've come to a standstill. Right. Stephen, yeah. well, thank you so much for coming on. All right. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Then. Well,